What is a stem cell facelift? Is a stem cell facelift a real facelift? Well, a stem cell is a very special cell that is produced only in our bone marrow. And that's only in very specific bones. And these cells are very unique in that they're able to change into many other different types of cells. And so they're able to have these properties that can restore health to disease tissue and they can differentiate into other cells so they can transfer themselves into other cells. Now, in your own natural fat, there are these cells called ADSCs, adipose tissue-derived stem cells. So in a way, they're not true bone marrow stem cells. However, they have some of these properties. In terms of aging, we all have a certain amount of fat in very specific compartments of the face. And with natural aging, we lose some of that natural fat. And if we certain activities like exercise, like factors such as smoking, well, it will tend to increase the resolution or reabsorption of that natural fat. So what is fat transfer? Well, that means taking fat from somewhere else in the body and usually quite small amounts and we're putting it in very specific areas of the face to rejuvenate the face. So these are not true stem cells because true stem cells can only be taken from the bone marrow. However, these have some of these stem cell properties. Well, over time, every decade, we lose more volume from our face. And these are in very specific fat compartments of the face. And this was a very interesting scientific paper published now 10 years ago where we could see these com facial compartments in terms of at anatomy and if we add volume to these areas we restore the rejuvenation. So this was taken from an article in the Daily Mail where a journalist showed how her face had aged with time and she'd lost natural volume in multiple areas of her face and undergoing fat transfer, well, it rejuvenated her appearance because it added volume in very specific areas. It reduced the hollowing in her brows um, by increasing the volume there. It reduced the volume in her cheeks and around the upper, the lower eyelid area. Sometimes that's called the tear trough area. And then in the kind of folds, it just rejuvenated the cheeks, the nasolabial folds, and some of the lines and wrinkles around her face. And also around the marinette area, it just softened and smoothed these areas. So what's the advantage of these kind of stem cells or fat transfer, say, face it? Well, it does reduce aging and it replaces like with like because you're replacing natural volume loss of fat with fat transfer. And in some areas, it's better than fillers, particularly the lower eye eyelid area that's very tricky to fill with fillers. Well, with fat transfer, can look very nice and natural. It's long lasting. So some of that fat lasts for many years. And certainly in my patients, I've seen patients who've had fat transfer even eight, nine years later, they still look good. The fat has survived, particularly under the eyes around the cheek area. And it has these adipose-derived stem cells which have regenerative properties. It improves the quality of the skin. So that means people who've got fine lines and wrinkles, well, it could really improve that. But there are some disadvantages. Now with fat transfer, it's an artistic treatment because not all the fat survives. 50 to 60% of the fat survives. However, it's very artistic in that some of it does not survive and it's very technique dependent. Going back a few years, well, some doctors who were doing, um, plastic surgeons who were doing body surgery used the same instruments for body fat transfer as for the face. And really the face is surgery of millimeters, whereas the breast, the buttock, that's surgery of centimeters. So using those same instruments did not give good natural results. It could give lumpy, bumpy changes. Technique is very, very important. I've been using the same fine, delicate instrumentation for many years. And although that has been innovation after innovation, those fine instruments are so key to giving reliable results that are the same time after time. So where is it particularly useful? Well, certain areas of the face, stem cells, fat transfer works really well. The lower eyelid and the cheek area survives even for many years. The upper cheek area, small amounts in the nasolabial folds, the marinette areas, 
and like for the lines, perioral lines, that sometimes they're called smokers lines, but often they're not in smokers. Well, it can restore volume in this filtrum area. And of course the temple area as well. There's certain areas that are much more tricky because they're very delicate, the upper sulcus. Well, I'll show you an image where it got a very good result in this area. However, it's much finer, this area. The forehead area as well, it's a more delicate area because the skin is thinner. Ear lobes, well, we want a natural result, so not too much. And the lip area, well, there's lips move a lot, so there's a lot of reabsorption in this area, so it's a much more challenging area to get a fine quality result. Well, we can take fat from other parts of the body. I often take it around the belly button because that's a soft area and there's less fibrous tissue, but it can take it from other areas as well. We can use centrifuges to delicately separate the fat from the other cells. We re-inject this into very specific areas of the face and respecting the natural anatomy because we don't want it superficial we don't want to see lumpy bumpy changes so we need to put it in a way that it's natural and cannot be seen and we can reduce hollowing around the eyelids we can increase volume in very specific areas of the face around the tear troughs and malar area we can smoothen out aging like folds marinette and nasolabial folds this is one of my patients where she had a lot of changes around the eyes and really the dark circles under the eyes was hollowing in the tear trough area and with stem cells and fat transfer we can rejuvenate this lady's appearance and make it look very natural and take many years off her. In the upper sulcus well there's asymmetry and hollowing on the left side versus the right side so fat transfer can be used to just rejuvenate this area and reduce asymmetry. Overdone volumes, too much volume in the face just looks puffy, it can be called pillow face and they're very, there are lots of celebrities, Meg Ryan is showing this picture where she doesn't look quite how she look, used to look before. She's lost some of her natural appearance, some of this volume just looks enhanced and her face has changed as a result. With a natural looking stem cell face of surgery, well often we need to combine fat transfer and stem cell facelift with lifting the face, not too much volume. Lifting in the deep plane restores the anatomy to where it used to be, which recreates this kind of natural V-shape appearance, but volume is often really important for that as well. Is a stem cell fat transfer a real facelift? Absolutely not, because the stem cells that make up the fat transfer, well, it's actually only a tiny proportion of actual fat. Probably less than 1% of fat transfer is true stem cells. And so to do true stem cell work, requires a lot of regulation and that's quite challenging in Western countries such as the UK. However, there are these adipose stem cells that live within your fat that have some of those properties. So a stem cell fat transfer, is it a real facelift? No. However, fat transfer can be very helpful because it restores volume. It's an artistic procedure. It can feminize the face such as the OG curve. It can rejuvenate. Key is to look at an old photograph of each person to see how they've naturally aged so that appearance can be restored. Less is definitely more. You don't want to have a lot of volume. Less is more because it wants to, we want it to look natural. And of course it is more than just the volume because those little adipose um, derived stem cells, they rejuvenate the skin, they improve the quality of the anatomy in a way that's more than just volume. I do thank you for watching. I do hope this information is useful. Thank you for watching. And if you have any further questions, do please do not hesitate to ask me.